Welcome back to uh, Jordan's Collectible Series. And uh, today we're gonna be continuing on with some Disney collectibles. These ones are going to be more ceramic pieces today from Disney's history. Um, actually from the 1930s all the way to the 1960s. So a lot of history stuff here, not so much new stuff. But um, I think it's a really interesting movement. I know a lot about it and I wanna share that knowledge with you. So today we're gonna be talking about um, four different brands, but mainly focusing on just one. So the four brands are Brayton Laguna, Evan K. Shaw, Vernon Kilns, and Hagen Reneker. And they all have their own unique attributes. Some are about miniatures, some are just about the color and the size of the pieces, and some are just about on the immense amount of work they did. But we're gonna focus today, we're gonna go in all four, I do promise, but we are gonna focus today on Brayton Laguna. Brayton Laguna was the first ceramic products made by Disney. They had a very short contract, they only went from 1938 to 1939, but in that time they really set the standard for what those products would be. And just so you know, it's these products are very different than today's merchandise. You know, it's not limited editions, it's not limited runs and just sorts of ways to make collectibles. These were just general merchandise sent at general stores, department stores, even some to the theme parks. And these products were very delicate because they were ceramic and they became limited through time and that's what made them a collectible. But let's talk about Brayton Laguna. They are rare because they're the first, you know, the first things they did were Snow White pieces. They did the full set. They did a Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and little forest animals. And this set was interesting because they didn't really use the same uh, models that the studio used. So they look a little different than the characters you remember in the movies. They didn't use the right colors, so the colors are a little bit off, like um, Snow White's dress is a weird blue, not that yellow, black kind of material that we're used to. But so this set was a little weird, but uh, Laguna really did get better and better. So their very next set after that was some of the classic Disney characters. You know, you had Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, Goofy, Donald. I really love the Donald. It's a really cool one. Um, these looked a lot better though. The colors were more on point. Um, they shined really well and they just had a really vibrant look to them. And they did this at the same time as um, Ferdinand the Bull. See, Disney did all of this to kind of maximize profits for merchandise on all of their early projects. Like they did the Snow White because Snow White was so profitable, they needed more merchandise. And the same for Ferdinand. Ferdinand was an Academy Award winning short, so they wanted to give the kids and the families something to kind of commemorate their favorite film. Um, these stuff, this stuff was definitely constantly changing from Brayton Laguna. They didn't really know where they were going with this because Ferdinand, they did two sizes of all of their different products. They did a large and a miniature. So it's almost identical, but the paint jobs are a little bit different because you're working with smaller pieces. But all of these are just really pretty, pretty pieces of work. And then the final project they did for Disney was the Pinocchio set. And this is really where they hit their stride. It's really sad it was the last one. Pinocchio, they did the character Pinocchio, they did Honest John and Gideon, and they did a whole bunch of Figaro's. They did Figaro playing with Cleo, Figaro just on her back, and they did Figaro in her bed, and that's the one I really like. I love Figaro sleeping in her little bed. It's very cute. They did some great ones with Geppetto, and then probably their crowning achievement, in my opinion, the Coachman cookie jar. This is a big cookie jar of the man who kind of has just a really small scene in Pinocchio, which is this coachman that, you know, takes them into Pleasure Island and then takes them out as donkeys, but that's what that character's there for, just about that. And um, they're really beautiful pieces, you know. They were a very small um, pottery house. I think at max in their heyday, they had about 70 employees. 
And a lot of them, I think, were doing the paint jobs more than anything, because these painting jobs on the Pinocchio pieces are just really delicate. Um, sadly, yes, Disney did end the contract at that point. I think they just wanted to go to a bigger studio um, who was making these things, which we will then get into that next time with Evan K. Shaw, and they're really great pieces. But that was it for Brayton Laguna. You know, the company sadly did close down in the late 60s. Their owner died in the 50s. So it's just kind of where it went from there. As for the location of Brayton Laguna, it's pretty much gone now. But what's there now is a restaurant that kind of pays homage to the old production that was there. And it's very nice. And in the back, there's actually a plaque that talks about the history of Brayton Laguna, as well as some of the other pieces of art they did. Not so much the Disney stuff, but some of their plates, their bowls and drinking devices that they had. Lots of just really cool ceramics. So if you ever do get the chance to go down to Laguna Beach and see it, I do recommend it. Um, to get into pricing on some of these things, they do range, you know, as economic times go around and as these things get older, sometimes they do go up, sometimes they do go down depending on interest level in these things. But some of these can go for as low as $100 for like some of the forest animals that you see in Snow White, but can go really high all the way up to like $5,000 for like a Coachman cookie jar. It really just depends on the luck that you have in finding these things, but they're definitely some treasures that we should really all hold on to. I mean, they're, like I said, they're not like today's collectibles. They're not numbered. They're not trying to create a value for them. These are valuable because, I mean, this is pottery made in California. There is earthquakes. There is all sorts of ways to damage these items, and they're not gonna last the same. And as soon as one of them has a crack, and they have crazing, you know, some of it loses some of its looks and the color starts to go away, these things are gonna lose value. So they're just very delicate and just a really cool piece of Disney collectibles. Well, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you did like it, I'm probably gonna have three more going into the other different pottery companies as well as other collectible videos. And I wanna hear from you guys what else you want to see. So please let me know, go in the comments, please subscribe to these videos. I'm going to have a subscription button right here. Look at that. Maybe think, let me click the one down here. I really would appreciate it. I want to keep doing content for you guys. So thank you so much and have a good day.